We all know that higher education is at a crossroads these days. Many colleges are dealing with declining enrollment, funding cuts, and increased demand for scholarships to help pay tuition. Tonight, our education station reporter Daniel Wiggins begins a series of reports on higher ed and the uncertain future it faces. Year 2010, college enrollment in the U.S. hit an all-time high, 21.2 million students, among them an influx of adults seeking new degrees post-recession. This was the heyday of higher ed. So we actually started this project before the pandemic. I think we even began it in uh, late 2019. Less than a decade later, cracks started to show, according to Sarah Butramadic, an investigations editor with nonprofit education news site, The Heckinger Report. Those early signs pointed to a pair of factors, declining birth rate and cuts in funding. Particularly in places like the Midwest, you just have fewer teens graduating from high school that uh, can then go enroll in college. And a lot of states cut higher ed funding during the recession and hadn't yet restored it uh, to pre-recession levels. So we knew that there were a lot of institutions that were, were struggling. As the pandemic began and colleges sent students home, the Heckinger Report created a financial fitness tracker. The purpose, to assess the fiscal health of public and nonprofit schools. The tracker took public data and applied it to four different metrics. Out of 2,662 schools included, more than 500 showed warning signs in two or more metrics. They were not evenly distributed throughout the country. Ohio actually had uh, the highest number in, in our samplings. The tracker hit on 36 Ohio schools in all. Red flags four years ago, now part of a painful reality today. Like so many universities across our country, it has been challenging for BW to balance our budget with expenses outpacing revenue. News of layoffs and program cuts are unsettling. One of my friends has a major where it's only there's only three people in it and it's getting cut. There is a lot of anger. There is a lot of disappointment and unhappiness surrounding this. While other schools see mergers as a potential lifeline, Right now, the forecast isn't good, as institutions compete over a shrinking pool of students. 20 years ago, every parent was telling their children, you need that four-year degree. This is your ticket to the American lifestyle we've become accustomed to and having opportunities. But today, that's changed. The Kelly McLean Achievement Center prepares students for college with testing prep, grade-specific tutoring, and career exploration. Founder Kelly McLean says teens are reevaluating what a four-year degree means to them. And so some kids are looking at it like, do I need the debt that goes with it? I have students who are going into the trades. I have students who have become auto mechanics making $150,000 a year. Um, the Illuminating Company has an amazing program, and those people are making 80 grand a year as linemen. Kelly McLean's job is still focused on helping students find the right fit for them. Now that includes digging into a school's financial stability. Because college admissions, their job is to get heads in beds so to speak. It is a sales job. They're going to tell you everything's fabulous. In the first 10 months of 2023, a total of 30 colleges closed their only or final campus location. Alarming, but down from 48 closures the year before. Both numbers a sharp jump from a prior high of 13. A troubling trend higher ed watchers say isn't likely to improve soon. I think that there are still college closures predicted ahead. I, there's a lot of questions about what happens after pandemic relief money runs out. The folks that I have talked to don't think that higher ed financial health is, is going to be problem free. Danielle Wiggins, 3 News. And tomorrow we'll take a look at how this financial uncertainty is impacting prospective college students. You can see that tomorrow on Channel 3 News at 5.